Hello there. Welcome back to our Around the Grid challenge. Currently halfway through our second team. Alpha Tauri, hopefully, provided we can close the gap to Red Bull. Last time around, I did say that uh, most likely we are going to have to let Rick go. And that is kind of probably what's going to have to happen here. I think Paris is going to be able to take the World Championship. That's the thing. But I think Rick, unfortunately, here is just going to... He just doesn't perform well enough, really, to be that second driver that we need. Kind of probably what we might actually end up seeing with Red Bull this uh, this coming season if the other teams get closer to Red Bull and Paris continues to uh, perform as he did last uh, year or this year, depending on how you look at it. But yeah, uh, we're kind of in a bit of a... Kind of a weird situation is the best way I can actually describe it, but... If we have a look at who's available to us, there aren't actually, I believe, a lot of drivers. Uh, we could... Yeah, we don't have a lot of options here. It would be Stroll or Show, basically. So Noda's also an option, uh, but yeah, we're going to be saving up a little bit of money here over the next couple of races. And we're probably going to just have to try and, you know, let go of Danny Rick. And if we can't find a driver to replace him, we're going to be in, most likely some trouble here. We also have three projects ending, so we basically have to make a choice. So we focus on the car, which currently is lacking because we have pieces missing, so we might as well go ahead and replace those, uh, like so. And there we are. Okay, so we are lacking a lot of pieces. So yeah, we're going to have to manufacture too. So as you can imagine, this is going to take its toll on our finances, and as such, there isn't really a good way to, to do it. We need to we need to switch out Rick, but we also need the car to run if we want to have uh, any sort of chance of having decent performances. So, it's a very weird situation, I guess is the best way I can describe it, because the best thing to do would probably be to, you know, get rid of Danny. To get in a better driver but its contract is very expensive we don't have a lot of money financially we are looking at a monthly balance of just two million so we're probably gonna have to as i said either completely stop development of the car to save money to to let him go uh, which would be one option but the main thing that i'm worried about is that the cost for any driver if you want to you know break their contract let's have a look here at the uh, stroll for instance I believe we did scout his contract. It's not too expensive, three and a half million. So we could pick him up. He does have decent pay stats. He's not bad or anything like that. So I think actually this is the best thing we can do in terms of getting an, an, an upgrade. And that is kind of weird to say. He's almost also got max adaptability. For show, it's kind of the same money, but I think he actually has better stats. He's lacking a little bit more on the braking, but his adaptability is 10 points lower. It's going into the other stats. So on this is show it would probably be a better option and for him we need about 4 million then we have if we take a look at Danny Ricks here contract 9.7 so we're going to need about 14 million to make this happen plus probably a million in in fees or rather sign on bonus so I think what we're going to have to do is just save up that money uh, just stop development for a little bit which of course sucks massively but if we take a look at the point score here, Rick has scored 52 points, Paris has scored 200 points more. Um, of course, Danny Rick hasn't always had the best pieces in his car, he's been a bit unlucky. But at the same time, we the gaps are so small that the only way that I see us winning both championships with the races remaining, which are just 10, um, is if we have a good chance of getting one twos and we are going to get one twos either with stroll or with most likely show so yeah both of those are pretty cheap we probably should go ahead and just replace them for sunoda that's, that's paris that's not sunoda uh for sunoda i don't know remember when we started this but since we need to save money we can also go ahead and just wait a little bit because he does grow fairly decently as well Albon, uh, we have Piastri as a free agent, but let's be honest here, even if we pick him up, he wouldn't be a huge upgrade. It would be better to spend four more million to get show in that case. So yeah, I think that's what we're going to do. We're going to be manufacturing parts, of course, but we're going to be playing it a little bit safer. 
we are gonna basically not do anything that would uh, be very detrimental and in this case this is an incredibly tiny upgrade that i think we'll ignore for now so i'm gonna go ahead and make one more side pod so we have an so we have an extra one the other things that we're getting this idea are chassis and suspension so we don't really want to manufacture any of those for the time being uh just to make sure that we you know if we're getting an upgrade this is an upgrade uh with the exception of course the fact that we're losing low speed shows up as blue for some reason so i would assume the next suspension is actually a fairly decent upgrade so we'll just live with those two that we have the chassis uh this would also be a well not really an upgrade i don't know what the numbers are showing a screen but yeah we're gonna have to take a little bit of a risk here in the sense that we are gonna be saving money four million five million or so from this point forwards so that we can go ahead and replace Danny Rick, which sucks, let's be honest. But there's no other way around it to make this really work. And there we go, so Nodo Scouting is complete, and he doesn't look too shabby here. 88, 85, 88. Yeah, not bad at all. Contract, though, we don't know anything about that one, so we're gonna have to do a proper detailed scouting to get that. But I still think show, judging just from the stats there, quick, uh, like a quick view. That show probably would be a better bet, honestly. Okay, apparently we are getting cumulatively wary here, so we'll go ahead and stop some of this training that I've set up because it is uh, tiring our crew out extremely. And we should be safe here. The month should take over before anything happens. So we're going to leave it like this. Now... As I said, I have been testing a bit of the pit crews. I uh, just want to mention this quick, but it seems like switching your engine, your gearbox, your ERS at races does increase your wariness. So do keep that in mind. It might actually be a good idea if you are dominating to run yellow components, just so you don't have to switch them out for races and, you know, practice, just to make sure that you can get your pit crew a little bit less fatigued. Could also be that simming practice, sometimes the AI doesn't find the correct uh, setup, they call the car in a bunch, changes things. I haven't tested that extensively, but that could explain why some some weekends we have extensive, uh, or rather much higher uh, fatigue jumps than you would anticipate. So there is something going on there. I did figure out, however, that if you switch, say, all of these components during a race weekend, that equals close to 10-15% uh, fatigue. So... Try and switch these as soon as you get them. Don't wait until race weekend. Particularly race weekends when you have the... Uh, when you have the... Why did I scout his race engineer? This brings me much confusion. Uh, but yeah. As I was saying, yeah, don't wait until the race weekend to put on new parts. Because that will also affect fatigue. So it's a bit of an interesting system. And particularly also with race weekends when you do have the... Uh, race hospitality which lowers your pit crew performance that's gonna hurt uh, quite a bit so let's see here money wise we can do netherlands we can do italy and we can probably get a new driver for singapore i think that would be the best bet probably so yeah but now though as i said we will just have to be saving a bit of money there's just no way around it we need money here if we are to switch out Rick and to win the championship here in a season where we have gambled hard. That's the best way I can describe what we've done this season. We have gambled hard uh, on being able to, you know, win this season before the uh, big regulation change happens. We, we're kind of we're kind of relying on getting that uh, that done in time. So we'll have to see exactly how this works out. Now, the chassis here is a bit of a tiny upgrade. Uh... Top KPH for one. We are still lacking a lot of cornering, is what I'm seeing. We still haven't put the rear wing on, that's probably it though. But yeah, for now, we will not be manufacturing this chassis because, well, man chassis manufacturing is expensive. We also do get some sponsorship money every now and again, so the money will slowly go up. Uh, Yeah, I don't think we have much of a much of a choice here on what we do. No, that was actually car one that has all the parts. That's even more concerning. So yeah, we might be in a tad bit of trouble here, honestly. 
But then again, I'm pretty sure the, the cars are cl very close to each other, so it doesn't really matter if we have a look at Red Bull here. Yeah, uh, Red Bull is first in low and medium. We aren't that far off it. This is 0 0.30. 0 0.030. That's nothing. Same here with the high speed, but then again, uh, we're closer on high speed. So yeah, we're going to do some sacrifice and brake and engine cooling in order to get more... More of the other stats, I guess. But yeah, as you can imagine, the, the cars in 25 are so close that most upgrades don't really matter too much. Norris has five months remaining on his contract, but I believe he is not interested. So it would be beautiful to snatch it for free. Maybe next year. We'll see. But yeah. No. Danny Rick loses even more of his stats here. And so does Paris. Two points defending, reactions, accuracy, overtaking, and adaptability. Man is leading the championship. <laughs> Please have mercy on his soul. Uh, but yeah, we're going to have to deal with that. Uh, other than that, as I said here, the car development isn't looking too great. We're kind of in a bit of a hole. It's the best way I can describe our current situation. So there is going to be a little bit of work here that needs, uh, needs doing, so to speak. Okay, let us get enough pit crew training in here so we can actually cancel out the losses. I'll just get this set up really quick and then we shall continue into Sandvolt. So this is what I opted to go with so far. A little bit of, uh, well, at least we're keeping the stats kind of as they are. And we should have enough, uh, well, tiredness here to not having any struggles at Sandvolt. But at the same time, um, total, we're going to still be losing some uh, some stats here, mainly the estimated pit stop time. So if we can, we're going to be putting in some gym sessions in the other weeks here. We'll just have to see what we what we can. We'll be switching this up after each race, kind of make that work. But that shouldn't be a, a big deal here. Manufacturing of the rear wing is complete. Uh, do we have that on both cars? Let's have a look here. We don't. But yeah, again, here, this rear wing... Is actually going to put us back into contention. So if you put those on both cars. Remember we were like 11th and 13th. In medium and high speed. If we have a look now. We are 5th and 7th. So it's not great but at the same time. We are like 1 kph behind Red Bull. Actually 1 kph perfectly. And that is from first to last. So yeah. We're not that far behind. I don't, I'm not worried at this point honestly. We just need a better driver. Because... We kind of already in a position where we have pulled, or rather taken, the car to its extreme. There's not really much else to be to be gotten out of the car. And what we could do here is, as you can see with this, make this suspension. But again, I want to get the driver first, so we'll just wait and again just allow the research to kind of run its course. There's no real other choice here. We have gotten a little bit of money now because the month ticked over, and if we have a good um, good week here at Sandvold. We should get the money to replace, potentially, Danny Rick here. And we'll just deny the board again. If the board goes to your session there, you get extra confidence for, you know, having a good result. You get the negative confidence, but basically double confidence change for successful, for successful or disappointing results. Since the board already loves us, there's no reason to take that risk, basically, of, uh, well... I say one driver top six, or should we just do both top ten? Both top ten is probably better. Uh, but as I was saying here, because of the fact that we already have maximum board confidence, there's no real point in us doing anything that, you know, causes risk. So that's at least the logic. Now, I'm looking forward to seeing if we can, you know, have a good race here. Potentially we could get an extra, what would this be? 600 something thousand from this race weekend. So, unfortunately, this could end up being uh, Danny Rick's last one, but we'll try and make it a good one. Let's head to Sandvolt, see if we can uh, catch up a little bit more on Red Bull. So, we had a pretty poor qualifying from both drivers at uh, this GP. I'm just happy that we didn't take the uh, top six for one driver qualifying that I was considering. Because uh, we would have failed that. But yeah. Paris Air just could not set in, put in a proper run in Q3. We did three flying runs, as you can see here. And neither of our drivers managed to beat their Q2 time. Which sucks. But 
Verstappen is behind us. We have Leclerc in fourth. We have a very varied grid here, I would argue. Alpha, Aston, Ferrari, Williams, Mercedes, Alpha, Alpine. Uh, I think the cars we're missing are the McLarens and the Hasses. So if you replace one of our cars and the Red Bull with those, we have every team in the top 10 here. And that in itself is kind of funny, but yeah. Not the best, uh, not the best performance from our boys so far. And in terms of strategy here, as you can see, one stopper is definitely not recommended. No matter what we do, we do not want to. So we'll see what we can do in terms of running a couple of stints aggressive, then running, you know, a light stint. It is potentially viable. Uh, let's see if we can make a, you know, a two stopper. That is faster than any of the other surroundings here, but we can't really do that. So I think we might just stick with the standard here. Uh, the thing here, the thing here with the strategy though is that you will pit earlier than mostly anyone else, and that is kind of the whole point by doing something like this. Because you are pitting sooner than everyone else, you'll be able to take advantage of uh, your tires more. That's the whole idea. Uh, but yeah, it's kind of hard to hard to decide on. Let's put it like that. Now, we could do something like this, which is slightly quicker. Uh, I think we're going to gamble on the three stopper here. I like to gamble. You all know that. So we'll do the same here for both cars. And again, the goal here is incredibly simply just to get overtakes done. Uh, because we're starting pretty far up the grid, though, we don't want to start on a soft tire. We want to try and create a little bit of gap to the cars behind. But even that might be slightly difficult. So... I think we'll do a little bit of a difference in strategy here. We'll do a little bit more of an aggressive one for Rick. We'll do this one for, for Paris. Although uh, we might need to switch his strategy up too. So we'll do this as... You know what? We're just going to go all in. We are going to go all in here. It just feels better that way. So do something like this. We can run attack towards the end of the soft stint. Hopefully we don't get screwed over by a red flag. Uh, can't guarantee anything though. But yeah, I think this is what we'll gamble on. Uh, we do need to, of course, get these new car pieces. That would be nice. Uh, but generally here we have kind of every everything that is good on our car. This too would just be a nice small increase. Uh, the underfloor, we don't really have anything. This thing would also be very nice. But again, it requires us to sacrifice some brake cooling, which I'm fine with. But as I said, uh, the biggest upgrade we can get right now is actually just replacing Danny Rick. So we'll get that done first, and then we'll worry about manufacturing pieces for the car after. But yeah, as I said, pretty weird lineup here. We even have a Williams on hard tires. That is going to make things a little bit more interesting, for sure. And let's see, do we have a good start? Do we keep the Red Bull behind for Danny Rick? Okay. Not really. I don't think we are s staying with the Red Bull. Oh, we did. See? A little bit of doubt was all he needed to uh, to perform. But yeah, Danny Rick gets Verstappen. And I think that is going to allow us to sell into a pretty okay spot here. Now, the thing here is that we could probably have started on the soft tires. It wouldn't actually have been a, neg you know, a big negative because every team is really close right now. That's the thing. We're right before regulation change. The AI has all developed. We jumped uh, teams. We've made Alpha pretty good, let's be honest. But at the same time, every other team is pretty close in terms of uh, in terms of their performance, and that's going to make things quite interesting here. Now these tires can go up to 135 degrees, so we've still got plenty of tire uh, left too to mess with. And Paris is kind of uh, doing a move there on Ocon that worked out really well for him. And I would assume we're going to see Ricky do a move on Magnussen. Yeah. Well, Magnussen came back at him. But Paris is just eating through the field. So, could be another dominant performance here from uh, Paris. We shall see. But for now, we'll sit back. We'll allow things to unfold. I'll try and work uh, Rick a little bit further up the, uh, up the grid here. But honestly, he shouldn't have any problems overtaking Magnussen. Well, he's going to have them now because he's a part of a bigger DRS train now. But we'll try and recharge his battery, try and get an attack done, and of course move Rick up as well. Paris is kind of just doing it on his own right now, already up to uh, third position, second place now. Oh, 
everyone needs to stop a little bit there. There's been a crash. Let's see what actually happened here. It was George Russell involved. Barely any room to maneuver. And oh, that's obviously far from intentional. That could be the Aston straight up out. We'll see. Looks like show is still driving. Doesn't look like any damage on either of the Aston, so that is interesting. But for Paris now, the thing is actually going to be to get away from the Red Bull. So we're going to go ahead and harvest a little bit here. It's of course going to slow him down. Russell's going to catch up, but that is honestly okay. Uh, the one that we don't want to catch up is actually uh, Leclerc. So we can keep Russell with us for a little bit here and keep Leclerc kind of behind while we recharge. That would be good. But as I said, we'll also try and recharge with Daniel Rick. We'll try and move both cars forwards and we'll see where we stand once we get close to that first pit stop. We're getting closer to the pit window here. Rick is falling backwards. He was running ahead of Sonoda for a while, but as you can see, he's gotten overtaken by three cars. It's uh, not good for his confidence. So we're going to go ahead and pit him on this lap. Honestly, it's the best time to pit anyways, so let's get him in there. It is going to put him to the back of the grid, though. There's just no way uh, around that. If we have a look at the time consideration, 19 seconds, even so, that's going to put, uh, well, Danny Rick here close to the back of the grid. But hopefully we can get some kind of cheap overtakes, catch up to the front. And for Paris, when he pits, he's going to come out, hopefully, ahead of Giovinazzi, gets five-second gap up to Norris. And as you can see, a lot of these cars are going to be pitting fairly soon as well. So we're just going to go ahead and pit here right now. It's going to be the best that we can really hope for. And Paris has created about a five second gap to Russell. So he's done very, very well here, I dare say. But yeah, Rick here kind of ran out of steam. They do very well. They'd catch a little bit up to Ocon, Leclerc and uh, Russell. But as I said, we ran out of steam after a bit, which uh, isn't that surprising. And luckily for us, Paris does not have a slow pit stop. Comes out ahead of Geo as we expected. Rick's come out in last, also as expected. And hopefully now we can get some overtaking done and kind of speed up uh, speed up Rick's confidence for one. But yeah, you can see that he's not really doing well with the with the DRS for overtakes. It's just a bit slow compared to some of the other cars. And as you can see, a show pits. So as we anticipated, uh, a lot of cars are going to start pitting. And for Parasite, we're actually going to go ahead and harvest a little bit. He had five second gap to second place. So Russell, who is second place, does now pit. And we are coming out healthily ahead. So the reason why we're recharging is very simple. We have free air. We aren't really stuck behind anyone. So we want to recharge right now while we are in fresh air. No one can overtake us on the pits. And as a result, what we want to accomplish by doing well this recharge is that if we catch up to the cars in front, we have energy to get the overtake done somewhat easily. Now, Rick here isn't that far behind Russell, just four seconds. So, the longer the rest of the grid here waits to pit, like Ocon, the more advantage Rick is going to be able to get on them, because he'll be able to jump them, and potentially also slow them down a little bit. Ocon popped out, slowed down Russell a little bit, Rick did beat Verstappen out, but we are doing extra pit stops, and of course we get hit by a red flag here. Did Paris crash? No. I was worried because it said compared to the crash right here. Who has crashed? Leclerc is driving. Magnus is driving. Looks like all the usual suspects are still on the track. So, is it Sergeant? No, it's Geo and Show. Okay. Now this was at turn one. It's clear contact there. Now their confidence will have taken a hit with that. Yeah, my confidence is taking a hit with that too, because we're now in trouble. Uh, we don't have any good tires for this, that's the problem too. I think we're just going to have to stay on the hards. We're going to have to stay on the hards and just do the strategy that we're planning to do. But the, the red flag timing here is insane. Like, within the next two, three laps, basically everyone would have had to pit. So, yeah. That's the risk of pitting early. You can, of course, get uh, screwed over like this, but honestly... We had to pit. 
The Claire is going to benefit massively, but at least Verstappen is suffering with us, so that's the only positive thing we can take with us for this. A lot of soft tires here, so we might get overtaken immediately, particularly Verstappen behind us. But yeah, uh, you can actually see here, Rick gets eaten up immediately. But I don't think we have much of a choice here. We're going to have to try and make the best out of the situation. And right now, that's going to be kind of difficult. The best I can hope for is probably Rick beating Verstappen. Honestly, that's going to be probably key. And I think what we're going to do here is change our strategy over to uh, what we planned initially, this one. Because now we can actually do it. Because of the fact that we have saved about two, three laps worth of degradation. And as such, this is actually now a viable strategy. Is it going to be quicker than what we're currently doing? Nah, not really. Um, but we'll have to see what we do here. Because we might just end up doing that to make sure that we don't spend too much time in the pits. But at the same time here, we, we do have a bit of a problem now. Because Paris needs to get overtakes done, so does Rick. And with these, these DRS trains that are going to form, that is going to be absolutely painful. But we'll try our best to make it, make something happen here. It's going to be difficult, but uh, all we can do is try our best and hopefully not lose too many points to the Red Bulls. We've uh, we've just had another incident and I see Magnussen in the wall. Leclerc is fine. So what I assume happened here is, is Leclerc fine? I think it's just Magnussen that's out, but we'll see. But yeah, we're not having any luck with getting overtaking done. Let's just put it like that. Crash. Crash, crash involving multiple cars. So this could actually give Leclerc a bit of a penalty. I don't know if it he took any damage. This time. Dangerously close to each other. And not just one car so they touch and then, you, uh, you know, Magnus and just loses control. Leclerc, did you suffer wheel damage? Not really. Maybe a little bit, but I doubt it. So the Red Bull takes down his, uh, his competitor. And does not get punished. <laughs> uh, this race is just very, very unfortunate. No penalties, okay. So not even not even a, a little bit of a helping hand our way. That's unfortunate, but let's face it, uh, incidents happen. Magnuson is still on the track though. That is that's kinda wild. But yeah, the the DRS train in front of us is not good news, so we are gonna have to just pit. I think when we plan to pit, because that is the only way we're making this happen. Uh, they, these soft tires are not making it till the end. I can guarantee that the mediums might actually make it till the end. So that's going to be interesting to to have a look at here. But yeah, two stopper might just be our best bet to get overtakes done. That's kind of the idea here, because currently we're stuck behind. This is basically what happens every lap we we get here. Stroll, Gasly end up side by side. There's no room for us, and we can't get any overtakes done as a result. Rick's doing well, though. He got an overtake done on Russell. But it's kind of the same thing there. So I'm thinking we are going to push these tires until, well, a few more laps, basically. Pit for the soft, run them standard, and then run an aggressive final soft stint to get the final few overtakes done. I think that's just going to have to be how we do things. So let's run this for a few more laps and then see what we, uh, what we do. Because, as I said here, we're kind of stuck. Yeah, we made a decision here. We're just going to pit both cars. So, we're going to go ahead and pit Paris first. Because Paris does have the best chance. Let's get him in. Uh, hopefully, again, we can make up for that one extra pit stop. Because we're just getting completely bogged down by the DRS train. That's the thing. The DRS train is bogging us down so hard. That there is no real option to, you know, make anything... Uh, Anything happen differently. And we have a pit stop error. Because why wouldn't we? <laughs> oh, that's... Uh, this really is the worst race weekend we've had in a while. So... Let's see, Rick. Can you succeed? You can. And because of that, you barely came out ahead of Paris. But yeah. Uh, we might ask Rick to get out of the way if he is slower. Which he definitely is. But I think... Yeah, Paris is just going to make it happen on his own. And... I am running them on aggressive instead of, uh, or rather attack instead of standard, which is bad. But honestly, not terrible here because we still have tire wear on our side here. 
we have a little bit to go on. But yeah, I am kind of tempted here to ask Rick to not attack Paras. Uh, but they are at least catching up to the cars in front, I would argue. Last lap, 12 and 13. We're not catching up by a, uh, by a ton, let's be honest here. But we are catching up by... Uh, well, we're catching up slightly. And uh, by the time they need to pit, that's going to be the big one. If we can get ahead. Russell actually pits now, so we did beat him in. But yeah. We might just need to ask Rick here to not be in... Uh, to not fight his teammate, if you will. We'll have to see now if we can get the overtake done. Yeah. I'm going to ask Rick to not fight his teammate. Allow... Uh, Allow Paris by, and we're gonna have to just deploy here and try our best. We should have gotten the overtakes done before they ended up bunching up like this, but uh, I kind of just let them do their own thing, and that backfired horribly. Okay, Schumacher, Norris, Pitts. We get a few overtakes done. Nope, we did. Did we? We did not. Just the other car switching positions there. Come on, Paris. There you go. Ocon pits. Can we beat him out? We can with both cars, but at the same time, we're going to be pitting again, so any DRS train that we make here is just going to negatively affect us later. But yeah. Let's see what we can do here. It's going to be, as I said, quite rough to make anything happen here. Potentially, we might need to force Rick to kind of play uh, wingman. But even that is going to be kind of rough here, so we'll just try our best and see what happens. Let's see how we are on the final pit stop. We're getting ready for Paris' final pit stop here, but honestly, I don't think that's going to really help. Uh, the sort of cars that are kind of on the same strategy to some degree. And as a result, here, we're just going to... We're just going to most likely get bogged down. That's the best way I can describe our current situation. Rick has made a good job, though, so can't really complain too much. But uh, as you might imagine here, once Paris catches up to the back of the rest here, if he can, uh, within the next 16 laps... He's going to have to get overtakes done. So, it is not looking very promising. Probably did the wrong strategy here. Did get held up a little bit too much by other cars as well. So, that didn't really help. But, uh, yeah. That red flag in particular did put us in a really, really bad spot. And we'll just have to try our best now. And see if we can salvage something from this race. So we're currently in quite an interesting situation here, because as you can see, every single car in the top 10 is in a DRS train. And currently, Verstappen is leading the train, and we're just two and a half seconds behind with uh, a few laps to go here. We don't really have too much tire left, but it's just three laps. And that does put us in a bit of an interesting situation, because, well, most cars around us have the same kind of tire. Leclerc's and Stroll's tires are kind of given out. So... Can we make something happen? Potentially. Uh, we're just going to have to try the best that we can. Same here really with uh, Danny Rick. We have him kind of chasing uh, chasing as much as we can to get him to in the points. But this is going to be a bit of an interesting end to this race. And it could decide <laughs> a lot here. Because as I said, Verstappen, uh, Leclerc, both of them are currently way higher than us in the points. Any overtakes we get done is going to benefit us. But at the same time, we are lacking in the battery department. But there's not really much we can do here other than try with uh, what little we have whenever we can. And Sonoda here is kind of messing with Rick as well. So that is causing us a little bit of pain. But yeah. Huge DRS train. Makes things kind of difficult too, to be fair. But Stroll and Leclerc could potentially have punctures before the end of this, and we can only beg that Leclerc does, honestly. Although, his tyres will probably survive till the end of the race. There's just no other way to... I, I, I don't think they're going to fail. Let's just put it like that. Final lap has begun, and we have a four... <laughs> four, uh, four car cavalcade, I guess you could say, ahead of us, just blocking everything. And... I don't know what is going to be our best chance of attack here with what little energy we have. 
But I think it might be after the DRS zone that we're going to try and use this little energy to, to make something happen. And for Rick here, we're just going to go balance. We are going to just conserve a little bit here until we're back to positives. And I did miss the point where we could attack. So that does suck. Unfortunately, Leclerc did survive. So did Stroll. Okay, we take the flag. It's just a bit fr frustrating that both of them recovered like that, particularly when, uh, particularly with the red flag. The fact that we started on the medium and then went hard probably did cause a bit of pain. But yeah, Verstappen, Leclerc, scoring uh, 30 points here. It, it's going to be hard to catch up when we scored five. So that gap is just going to increase, but we still maintain our lead. Sandvold is... Uh, Kind of rough anyways when uh, things don't go as you expect. And of course the pit stop error here kind of became monumental. Because if we had four and a half extra seconds. We might have been ahead of the entire. You know the entire squad. And of course that <laughs> red flag. Definitely definitely screwed us over as well. But that's racing. It happens. The only thing that I probably could have done differently there. Was that after the uh, red flag. We could have switched to a one stop strategy. Uh, basically just run a soft tie into oblivion then going on to hard maybe but that's gonna expand that would probably also not be the the best thing available to us now what we are gonna do here is replace that from wing because it failed for one and we're just gonna jump into the pick crew really quick here again I would think this is just the best way of doing it we did actually hit tired or weary so we are gonna allow them to rest and we might hit weary again this coming race weekend and the only thing I really did here was just switch components and sim practice. So if you take that into account, I do believe that switching components, particularly during race weekends, might make them more tired. So if you're planning on using, say, worn components, go ahead and install them before the race weekend. And you might actually end up saving yourself a little bit of uh, pit crew fatigue because they don't have any negatives to the, uh, the stats right now, as far as I know. So... I'm going to keep on experimenting with this, but honestly, if you are struggling with fatigue, try and see if this works for you. Would like to get some more input. But yeah, that was a miserable, miserable race. Now, we're probably going to go ahead and start some negotiations. Uh, but let's face it, that race wasn't really Danny Rick's fault. But at the same time, we do kind of need a new driver here. So we're going to go ahead and negotiate with Sho. And see what we end up with here. Season 1. Uh, well, let's give me a 3 season contract. Car 1, not car 2. And the buyout fee. Sorry, that is the wrong car. I was very concerned there when it said 29 million. But yeah, uh, total cost of hiring is 13 million. Let's add in a salary of, say, try 10 million first. But it's probably going to have to go up towards 12, 15, maybe even 18. Uh, but yeah, let's just do it like this. And let's say that we give you a sign-on bonus of a million. And then we will suggest this as a start. But yeah, unfortunately, we we need a second driver that can compete with Paris. He actually accepted this, so I kind of overpaid. I'm so used to drivers demanding huge salaries, so the fact that you can actually get show for cheap is amazing but yeah he's going to be replacing daniel uh we're going to be paying uh 13 well basically 40 million and we have the money for it so we're just going to go ahead and get that done show welcome hopefully you will uh you will be scoring points for us that's the only thing i can really ask for here so there we are i would assume that uh danny rick might be poached by aston we'll see though now, with that in mind, we can actually start manufacturing pieces again. So, let's just start by making a couple of chassis. Uh, I think that should be okay. Just do it normally. Yeah, do it normally. Have them buy Suzuka. And we're also going to go ahead and manage... Manage? Manufacture, is what I'm trying to say. Those suspensions. And if we can get them before Singapore, that would be great. And this will give us... This will actually give us to the give us them before Singapore, so that works out in our favor. Other than that, anything else we need to manufacture? 
Not really, the side pods are for the future. And let's have a look here and see what we can do design-wise. We don't have any CFD or wind tunnel. We'll be getting that in a little bit. And I'm a little bit unsure where we want to place that CFD and wind tunnel time. Hmm. For now, though, I think actually having a little bit extra money would benefit us more than making new parts. Because the only real upgrade that we're going to be getting, the last upgrade of this year, is going to be that safety and wind tunnel time. The only thing we can do is start a little bit of research. And the reason why we would like to start a little bit of research is because next year, no matter what we do, if we fail to get the Constructors' Championship, we might actually fail getting both here by looking at how things are going, we're going to have to stay here. And if I've completely wrecked the car going into next year so that we have even less of a chance, that would be terrible. So, yeah. That's going to be pretty bad. But we have new driver now. We're going to try out Italy, see if we can uh, make a comeback in Monza. But yeah, we'll see how this works out. Cornering is one of the best of the grid, but it was a shock that you poached him into an immediate contract. Sorry, Mike. I, I needed him. He's mine now. But yeah, let's say another driver, top three. We are going to gamble here. Both drives in Q2 and Q3. And we'll just have to try our best here and pray that we don't see any more big stat drops from uh, Paris here. We also have rain on Sunday. That's going to make things extra spicy. But for now, let's get practice and quality done. And then we'll see where we stack up. So not the world's best qualifying here with 4th and 7th. But with both Verstappen and Bottas taking penalties and the other Red Bull down in 12th uh, here. I think we're going to have to say that is a job well done. Particularly also since we only did one run in Q1, one run in Q2. So we, ha so we have extra tires due to that because we barely, well, used the extra set of hards, the extra set of medium. But the rain here is going to make that apparently very much a moot point. Because we're going to have rain for the entirety of the race. And we're going to start on the Inters, we're going to end on the Inters. Unless we have a incident. So the plan here is going to be, can we go full attack? And is that going to be quicker than doing a basic strategy? So this is probably what we're going to end up doing. It's just the best option. Uh, but because it's a fully wet race, we're already in kind of a uh, negative, if you will. Because it's going to be rough to overtake. That's one. Uh, but we could also go for a one stopper. But potentially this is 20 seconds quicker. Provided we don't burn the tires. So... We'll try something like this. There's no other way around it. We're starting front row here with Paris because of the penalties. We're starting third row with uh, Show. So we'll have to see if it can come in and immediately make an impact. But for now, let's jump into the Italian Grand Prix here. And I think this is, uh, this is one of the very, very rare full wet races. Because usually... I can't even remember the last time I saw a full wet race. Or full inter race in this case. Usually the you know the rain arrives at certain points, but having it rain for the entirety of the thing, that's uh, pretty rare, honestly. And looks like we're not we might win the drag race there. We'll have to see into that first corner. Looks like we are at least giving a good fight. Show held on to his place. Harris is kind of getting a good run air on Alonso, which is absolutely amazing because now we have fresh air. We are not going to be cooking the tires as much. Uh, the big question here is going to be can we. Hello, Mr. Roboto. The question is going to be, can we keep these tires alive? They can go up to 105 degrees. We've still got plenty of uh, tire life to go on, or tire temp, if you will. But as you might imagine here, um, we need to keep them alive throughout this entire race. And already, we are going to have a little bit of a dry period here. So running full attack is probably not going to be viable. But we are going to run these tires as aggressively as we can. And of course, we are going to try to, well, keep our lead for starters. But we're also going to try and move show forwards. So those are going to be the two goals here that we'll be working towards. Let's see how well we can uh, pull them off. 
So it took us a few laps there, but we have managed to move Show up into second place, which is massive. Verstappen has moved up into eighth, but Leclerc has fallen a little bit backwards. So currently things are looking very, very good, with the exception of the fact that we are planning to pit, while, well, most other cars here are not planning to pit. So that is going to potentially throw a little bit of a wrench in our plans, but for now, and as long as we can kind of keep an eye on it, we'll just uh, see how lap times are. Currently, we're running pretty equal lap times to most of the cars behind. And what we need in terms of gaps here to pit safely is 24 seconds. So that is not going to be great. Uh, we could, of course, also run light at this point. But I think our best bet here is just going to be to push through, pit, and then get overtakes done on what is going to be a, a better tire. I think that's going to be the best bet. But we might just stretch the pit stop time a little bit because right now we are doing well. And in particular in Paris case here, the longer we stretch, the better because, well, let's say put it this way. If we can get the cutoff to stroll to be a little bit longer, that would be massive. But I think that's going to be a tad difficult. And as you can see here now, Alonso has actually come back at show. So we might be running a little bit too aggressive a strategy here. We shall see. Could also be that the rest here are planning to pit because we are seeing a lot of fastest laps. And honestly, we can actually have a look at that um, in terms of what the other cars are planning. Just need to wait for this to end so we don't create a bug. Uh, but all we can do is go into lap history. We can look at the car so you can see the temps here. And let's say that we have a look at Alonso's that fastest lap last round. Last round, last lap. He's pushing a little bit more aggressively here. You can see that he did take care of his tires there at one point. Then he got overtaken. Then he started pushing. Uh, is he pushing hard enough here that it warrants a pit stop? Probably not. I wouldn't think so. But it is interesting to, to see here. Sainz, on the other hand, might be pushing hard enough that he will warrant a pit stop in the future. So... It's a bit of a difficult one to decide. Is it going to be good to pit or not? Because we are going to have that dry period now that I did mention. The really dry one. So I think what we're going to do here is just push through this dry period. Use up as much of the time as we need to. Kind of. And then we're going to pit. Of course, Paris here is going to probably come out in a bit of traffic. We're going to have to do overtakes, which could potentially backfire horribly. But at this point, we have kind of already chosen our strategy. There's no real other way around it. We have kind of settled in for what we're going to be doing. So no matter what I do at this point, we we have kind of let go of the uh, let go of the reins. The ship is going to sail its uh, own course without us really interfering. So yeah, we're going to have to pit again. The question is just when it's going to be the best time to pit. And I think once we get Ocon to 25 seconds behind, it's going to be the best time to pit for... Uh, for um, for Paris, but for show, sure, actually pitting now wouldn't be a horrible thing. But as I said, I do kind of want to stretch it past this dry area, uh, mainly because we are seeing higher temps and higher decks as a result of it, the track being drier. Uh, we could also potentially forcefully slow down sh uh, Showy a little bit, have him play wingman. But I think it's best to just have him to try and score as many points as possible. I think that's going to benefit us more in the long run. It has started raining again, and honestly, yeah, Show is doing a good job at holding these cars behind him. And if you expect 30-35% losses here now, it should be easier to overtake. But keep in mind, running behind other cars is going to be a lot harder than running in free air. Uh, but at the same time, I think this is the time to pit Paris. And we're going to have to pray that we do not get a pit stop error. Estimated to be about half a second quicker. Still going to have to, you know, make make up a lot of time doing this. But I think it's for the best. As you can see here, the estimates aren't necessarily, you know, pre too precise. Uh, for show, 24 seconds plus 8, 32. It's probably the best time to pit him as well. So we're just going to go ahead here and kind of double stack. Although we could keep him out and just hold, uh, you know, hold the fort, hold the line. But we're going to pit. We're going to see what we can what we can pull off here. We have 24 laps to, or 23 laps to go. Paris now could actually beat Ocon out, and that's kind of massive. That's actually not too shabby. Uh, no pissed up errors for either of our drivers is also big. So, yeah, Paris does get a bunch of free air. 
And if we can, you know, get the overtakes done. Wasn't too difficult for show. It did take a little bit of finagling, but we got it done. And same here with Paris. If we can get those overtakes done with the fresh attire, I think we can catch up to the Ferrari set. But the main thing, of course, is to beat the Red Bulls. So we'll keep on moving uh, cast forwards. Probably doing a one stopper here like everyone else. Well, a no stop, really. Would probably have been the better strategy, but uh, we'll regret that some other time. We're doing fairly well here. Show has been stuck behind Stroll for a little while, uh, but hopefully we can get the attack done now. We have kind of been saving up a little bit of fuel. Paris is currently caught up to the front of the pack here, but we're running out of laps. We have just, uh, well, four laps remaining. So both of our cars here are in a little bit of trouble, but Show does get the move done. Hopefully he can get bought ass by the end of this race. And for Paris, of course, the goal here is going to be very simply to get the, the Ferraris and the cars in front. Uh, hopefully we can make something happen here. But the main problem we have right now is, of course, going to be the fact that we are lacking energy. But even then, we should be quicker than the cars in front. So it's just finding our, finding a good moment to, to strike, really. So for now, we'll run aggressive for a little bit, pull the tires a little bit. Yeah, I agree with you. <laughs> and kind of try and just do a little bit of recharging over the next couple of laps here and maybe get a Ferrari or maybe two here uh, because we're going to need energy to get the overtake done, basically. That's going to be the main thing here. Uh, so yeah. Red Bull 2 is kind of attacking us. Show is getting closer to Bonas with the energy that we have and the fuel. That shouldn't be too much of a problem. But the main concern is, of course, Paris versus the... Uh, the Ferraris. That's going to be the big battle. And I think we are going to have enough energy here to actually launch the attack now. So, as you can see, we gain a lot uh, back here. And the goal here now is just going to be to deploy and attacking into the, basically up towards the corner here. And unless the Ferraris battle too hard, which they kind of are, we should be able to get by. Basically, we want to put pressure on one of them so they fall back, but if the Ferraris battle, they do kind of take up the entirety of the road. And that does make it difficult for us to overtake, but we might have gotten one here, and we did. We don't have enough battery. It did kind of cost us our entire battery, though. And while it would be great to get the, the second one here, too, we might actually get that done if we push fuel. Okay, that is massive. We actually got the second Ferrari too, and Shohei is going to have a little bit of a fight on his own. Now, I don't think we're getting Alonso here. It's a second uh, up to him, and honestly, getting the second place it would be far more valuable to Next us lap, lap. than uh, than pushing even further. But what I am thinking we're going to do here is, of course, deploy for Show. We should probably deploy a little bit earlier so that we were closer, and see if we can get Bonas. Now, Show had a much harder time than uh, Paris to get overtakes done to begin with because of the fact that, well, uh, he did get more punished, if you will. We're actually really close here. Are we close enough to attack? Reminder on the battery. We have used the entire battery. He's going to have the inside line. Uh... We have two battles here. I was kind of FA. I was kind of FIA, uh, you know, race direction there for a second. Do we have enough oomph? Paris overtakes Alonso. This does look like it's going to be a photo finish. Oh, this is a good angle. And Paris gets him on the line. Now, the question here is Show going to be able to get. Bot ass, probably not. But honestly, I should have watched the entire Paris versus Alonso battle from that angle on Alonso's car. That was actually kind of uh, kind of nice. And now we're just driving in formation. <laughs> but yeah, that was a massive lap there from Paris. Honestly, I did not expect him to get uh, Alonso, but he did pull it off. Let's face it, show in seventh isn't great, but at the same time, it's probably better than what uh, Rick would have gotten. I don't think Rick would have gotten in the points here, in my honest opinion. But yeah, that is six points for us with the additional 25 here. Verstappen, the only Red Bull scoring points. K 
keep in mind that the Ferraris are still kind of a... They're kind of still a wild card, if we want to put it that way. But we did extend our lead in the Drivers' Championship. Excuse me, a hiccup. And in the Constructors here now, we do start catching up. We're still 100 points behind. But I have hope that the last uh, eight races here can give us a bit of a miracle. But yeah, uh, in terms of how we're going to do it, if we do another season or not, I'm probably going to kind of set up a poll maybe once we finish this season, if we don't succeed with getting Constructors. But right now, I'm very, very hopeful that we can actually pull that off. So that is it for today. Sorry that it just has been two races. It's been a bit of a busy... Um, what do you call it in English? Middle Christmas? The between this? Basically, you know what we call uh, the time between Christmas and New Year's, the little Mula. So, basically, it's been a little bit busier than I anticipated. And as such, I haven't been able to record and upload as much as I wanted to. I really hope that I could sit down and just relax and record some. But unfortunately, it's been less than I anticipated. So, yeah. Hopefully, though, you have still enjoyed. Hope to see you around uh, next time. Thank you very much for watching. And even though some of you did reply that you are not expecting to have a good Christmas, or you're not going to have a good Christmas, I hope that changes. I hope you are going to have a good time even so. And to all you, wish me a Merry Christmas. Thank you. Merry Christmas to you all. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.